ITV1, how would you feel about meeting up again with your first love? Getting more nervous. Let's just get it over and done with, shall we? Two old flames are about to meet up, but will there still be a spark? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a finance and operations director. Jesus, love it, eh? <laughs> I offered you my bed. Yes, I did. I haven't shouted at him. I haven't screamed and shouted, which is what I'd really like to do. Dal and Anne last saw each other 18 years ago. They were a couple then, but now they're both single and they've agreed to meet up and move in together for a taste of what life might have been like if they'd stayed together. This is one first love that's about to get a second chance. Meet Anne. She's a successful single mum living in Surrey who knows exactly what she wants in life. I'm ambitious. I'm demanding, I'm difficult, I'm a high achiever, and I don't suffer fools gladly. The first man Anne ever loved was country boy Darren Langston. He still lives in their hometown on the Welsh borders, but he's not nearly as successful as her, or as ambitious. Down to earth, very laid back, very chilled. Being outdoors is something I really love doing. I'd rather be doing that than being stuck in an office. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Anne runs her life with military precision. Where's the mummy fish? Oh, I think she went over there. But there's one person who does bring out a more gentle side to her, her son, Jay. He's very cheeky. He's made me softer. He's made me realise that there are more things to life than work um, and work and more work. Darren isn't really career-minded. What he's interested in is camping, the outdoors, and Land Rovers. I collect National Geographic. I like to collect fossils. I love doing DIY. And I like dreaming about going on adventurous trips. Stuff like that, really. Anne and Darren's lives have gone in completely opposite directions. They couldn't be more different. But 18 years ago, Anne caught Darren's eye. I remember the first time I saw her. We were doing exams in a, in a classroom, sharing the same classroom. She was uh, sitting next to a window at the front of the class. I was sitting towards the middle of the class, a few desks back, and we just kept looking at each other. Darren has a special place because he was the first person I went out with. I think you always remember, you know, your first. Anne's school days were miserable because of bullying. Luckily for her, though, Darren was there to help. He kind of brought me out of myself. He made me feel important. It made me feel, you know, quite good about myself. It was a very young love, very hand-holding, you know, meet for lunch, meet at the end of school or before school. I remember I had to stand on tiptoes to kiss him cos he was quite tall and I was quite short. They were young when they met, and when Darren left school, they drifted apart. But neither of them have been able to settle down and they always wondered what's happened to each other. I would imagine that Darren hasn't changed an awful lot. I would imagine that he's still going to be a nice guy. I think he's still going to be, you know, fairly conscious of other people around him, I hope. The last thing I heard of Anne, I believe she moved down to Essex, and I believe that she got a job in the cosmetic department of one of the boot stores. I haven't really had that many sort of serious relationships. Now, I met Jay's dad through a kind of dating agency, um, and it wasn't a very long-term relationship and it you know Jay was kind of like a little accident but a, a very beautiful accident and, and I wouldn't change that I've had my fair share of girlfriends I have lived with two ladies didn't work out on both occasions not very good but luckily I've never been married or unluckily I'm not sure which Anne and Darren have decided they want to meet each other again tonight they'll come face to face for the first time in 18 years Anne, your reunion with Darren will take place at the Lyth Hill Hotel. In Hazelmere, Surrey. It's nice to go to somewhere very, very nice and posh. So I'm going to be so in the place down there. I'm going to be like a real country bumpkin. If the meeting goes well, they'll be moving into each other's homes to find out what might have been. Last time they saw each other, Anne was 14, Darren was 15. Time to turn back the years. Nervous? But I'll certainly be nervous when I'm sort of getting dressed and yeah. you know, trying to squeeze into clothes and things. I'm feeling 
petrified. I'm feeling sick about meeting Darren. I know I've changed a lot. A few dress sizes bigger than I want to be, so I'm a bit conscious about that. Well, the last time she saw me, I was 15, and I had got bum fluff and not a beard, so it's a hell of a shock for her probably to see this. She might not like it. It might have to come off. It might have to come off. Yeah, she's a nice person. She's pretty laid back, and she's got no airs and graces. It'll be good fun, and we'll just have a great time. But after 18 years, it might be a complete disaster. I really don't know. That looks lovely. Have a great time tonight. Yeah, I hope do. it goes really well I for do. you. I'll pop and let you know. Oh, that's nice. Is that all right for that's you? That's brilliant. That's good. Darren still lives in Oswestry, Street, but the date is near Anne's home in Surrey, which means a 200-mile trip in his trusty Land Rover. Just half an hour to go, and the nerves are kicking in. I'm hoping we can have a conversation most of the night and there's no big silences like there is on lots of dates I've been on. I think I'm going to come across as very, maybe too strong, maybe too demandingly domineering or, or something, and, and I'm hoping he'll see past that, but I am absolutely petrified. I'm getting extremely nervous now. I'm getting more and more nervous about it as each minute goes by. Hence, uh, hence that. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm kind of the best it's going to be. You know, until I lose weight. Yes, getting more nervous. Let's just get it over and done with, shall we? After 18 years of wondering what if and weeks of mounting anticipation, the moment of truth has finally arrived. Hello. Hi. Oh, my God. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. My God. Whoa. Good grief. Oh, yes. <laughs> Been on time. Uh, yeah. Wow. Hello. Hello. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Oh, come here, for God's sake. <laughs> you look absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Oh. And you're definitely as tall as I remember. Oh, God. Even with my boots. You look lovely. Thank you. Thank you. After a promising beginning, Darren is about to find out how very different their lives are. What do you actually do these days? I'm a finance and operations director for a um, UK or European branch of a large company, and I've got my own um, bookkeeping finance business. Jesus, bloody heck. <laughs> you are too really well for yourself. Um, oh, yeah, I'm doing God, okay. I'm this doing is okay. such a contrast. Well, why? What do you do? The prince and the pauper. No, the princess and the pauper. This is... <laughs> oh, don't be so silly. It, it is. is. Well, what do you oh do now? Oh, my then? God. I drill holes and that's it. You're in for a hell of a culture shock. That's all I'm going to say. So, first impressions? Very, very pretty. And she's got the most amazing brown eyes. You said some lovely things. I think I went red. <laughs> I'm just totally, utterly gobsmacked. I so am. She's so lovely. She really is. Thank you. Down and Anne are about to discover there is one thing they have in common. Were you shocked to find out I've got a little boy? I half expected it, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Or well, maybe children? I have one. Yeah. Holly. Holly? Six. Oh. I say as much as I can, yeah. Yeah. She's absolutely adorable. Darren's a part-time dad. Daughter Holly lives with her mum. Soon Darren feels brave enough to ask Anne some more personal questions. What's, what's happened to make you uh, evaluate your life, to say the least? Um, I guess because I've moved away from home. I set up a business. I bought a house. I've got a two-year-old. That wasn't expected, but I've got a two-year-old. Um, I just don't know where to go now. Well, do you think something's missing, then? Oh, yes, something's definitely missing. Um, Apart from a man? Well... <laughs> yeah, that's missing too, yes. Um, there's something that's something is missing. That's presumptuous, of course, you know, but... Well, no, that, that's missing, you know. Um... So I'm definitely your guinea pig, then. <laughs> <laughs> but Anne hasn't been bowled over yet. I don't take the first impression of somebody to be the important thing. You know, so what I say about him now and what I say about him towards the end of the week are, are two different things, you know. It's the person inside, not the person outside, that I pay attention to. Darren has no such reservations. I think she's not good. I haven't seen her for 18 years, and... Yeah, she's an incredibly attractive person. Things are looking good for Anne and Darren, 
But when he moves into a house tomorrow, he's in for a shock, finding that every single second of the day has been mapped out for him. It's very hard to be thrust into a situation like this. The last time Dan and Anne saw each other, he was a fresh-faced youth and she was a couple of dress sizes smaller. Until last night, they hadn't set eyes on each other for 18 years. But after a promising dinner, they've now agreed to the next stage of their once-in-a-lifetime reunion. What might Dan's life have been like if they stayed together? Today, he's moving into her life to find out. Anne and her best friend, Liana have been busy decorating the spare room for their extra special house guest. But although last night went well, Anne's having a sudden attack of cold feet. Fear. <laughs> Absolute fear. Fear that um, Jay will misbehave and I'll spend all my time telling him off. I'm just really not quite sure anybody wants to walk into this kind of life. You know, I have to live it. Darren is nervous too. I know that Anne lives in a three-bedroom house. Knowing the sort of work she does, I imagine it to be quite big. But because it's so, so young, impressionable, it, it is a little bit worrying for me. Very nice. Hello. That's, uh... Can you say hello? Hello. Hello. Mommy, Anna! For the next few days, Darren will be living with Anne and her superactive toddler Jay. And this is where I'll be staying, is it? Yes, this, this is where you'll be staying. Not turn over too much. Let me get your nose for you. But they aren't the only occupants. Let's hope Darren's an animal lover. Oh my lord! Look, here's oh wow! That's my rabbit. Rabbit. Yeah. See that? <laughs> Anne also has cats. Five of them. Yeah. Do you have a size of cat? Okay, from rescue centre. We need you rescuing. <laughs> Today I've just met the Pocket Rocket, otherwise known as Jay or Jason. I've never seen a kid have so much energy in all my life. I've met uh, three of the five cats, and they're all black. It's a bit unnerving with all these black cats. She probably practices witchcraft. You gonna say goodnight to Darren? Good night, Darren. Good night, night. Good night. Not surprisingly, Darren and Anne's friends are desperate for news. I've just had a message from my friend Jonathan, and um, he's asking me how I get on. Was it a nice surprise? So I've just uh, written the text back saying, yeah, it was a nice surprise. So it uh, seems our friends all rooted for me, so it's really good. And what do you think of him? What do I think of him? Yeah, he's OK. He's OK. <laughs> yeah, he's OK. Well, I've got to be cagey, and I? You know? <laughs> I think I'm giving everything away. You're going to sit on the fence, why don't you? I'm going to sit on the fence, you know? <laughs> Not one to rush in. After all the anticipation and the waiting, it's good to see her after all this time. Uh, I hope she likes me. Work day today. Their first full day together was a success, but now Darren is about to see a very different side of Anne. It's, um 20 to 7. Uh. <laughs> Good morning. She didn't get where she is today by letting people have a lie. Come on, Come on, eat. And this is what Anne is all about. Her office. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Adele. She's on credit control. How are you? How are you doing? This is Darren. Hello, Darren sir. Hudson, one of our sales hey, managers. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Thank you, Adele. Cheers. Thank you. She does make a very good cup of coffee, actually, I have to say. Uh, when was the last time you made coffee, anyway? I, no, I make coffee I for Howard. I thought you said that you were all equal here. We are all equal here, but... but you're the boss when it comes to making coffee. 
No, Sorry, I just no, I, no, I just I just do not have the time. Dig. Keep I'm digging. too no, I'm too busy doing their salaries and paying them. <laughs> so far more important things to do. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're done. Um, right, but I just check if I've got any emails. Euro dollars. What are euro dollars? I'll leave you to it. I'll go and step outside. Yeah. Okay. okay sorry. No, no, no. Please don't apologise. Okay. Krista, I think I may be confused, but what are euro dollars? Transition from Anne being a mother to Anne being a, a director. Somebody who has to get the job done, so she's quite abrupt and quite assertive. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, side to Anne. Yeah, because once we set the rate, we can't change the rate. For Darren, it's going to be a day of extremes. After being ignored at the office, he's to spend the evening being interrogated by Anne's friends. We wouldn't wish it on anyone. Good luck. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Hello! Oh, gosh. Hello, how are you doing? Would you like a drink? Right. Um, yes, I will have wine. So how's it going? Yes, yes. come on, come on, yes. come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, God, God. God. Well, you know, we've started a mad passionate affair. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, not too. <laughs> What's he like compared to being at school? He's got a beard. <laughs> Don't remember that. Sure. <laughs> Big guy's filled out an awful lot more than, than he had in school. I He's very tall. Have you yeah. been getting on? Well, I haven't killed him yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I've been kind of gentle with him. <laughs> not yet. Would you ladies like more time to talk? Thank you. No, 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 no. Let the interrogation begin. <laughs> no. Are you enjoying your stay, Darren? Yes. Oh, nice question. Good. So what have you been doing with your life between knowing Anne at school and meeting her now? I got a job. Doing? Doing. Oh, God. <laughs> I drill holes in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Are you qualified in anything? Uh, no, I'm not qualified in anything, actually. What would you be looking for in, in a woman? Ah. So, what do the girls think of him? Looks kind of not all that, but then I don't think that's important to Anne anyway. I think he's a really nice bloke, which could be a bit of a problem because maybe he's too nice. I know boring sounds a bit horrible, but not Anne's type. <laughs> For Darren, though, ignorance is bliss. I've just had a fantastic night. Fantastic night. And it was good because Anne kicked off her shoes. She doesn't judge me. She doesn't look down on me. And she just makes me feel like me when I'm around her. Several glasses of wine later, Anne's still not sure. I want to be very good friends with him. Um, but... I don't know. There's something holding me back somewhere. I don't, I'm not sure I feel, you know, that I can commit to him. While Stan is still deciding how she feels about Darren, it's been a long time since there's been a man about the house. So today, while she's working at the office, he's got his work cut out too. Right. I've been at some domestic duties. OK, number one, garden at the front. Cut up wood and all the bushes. Number two, replace old bulbs. Number three, glue wallpaper in office. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Walk the rabbit. I have to walk the rabbit. I'm not really big on rodents. deserves 10 out of 10 for effort, but completely chopping down Anne's pride and joy might slightly take the edge off her appreciation. Have a good day at the office, dear. No. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. I noticed the, the bush, yes. Is it OK? Um, no, not really, it's not. Well, well I'm just trying to get more light. I'm sorry, I shouldn't yeah, No, no, it. it's, it, it's, you know, I mean, at least it won't rain on us anymore, but... Uh, uh, the fact that they come out in the next month, they fly in the next month. I'm oh, really, really sorry. He's cut down her bush, and now you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. You know, I've just got to kind of snap out of the he's hacked down my bush kind of uh, 
kind of mood and you know I just need to I need to make some space at the moment tonight because I'm just feeling you know a little bit you know fractious I've got a headache and I just need space desperate to make amends Darren offers to make supper oh my god oh this is interesting ah great but using yesterday's sausages might not be the way to do it. This is pure, unadulterated bachelor food. She's not going to like it. She's going to take one look at it and say, ooh. Okay. Okay. It hasn't done the trick. Darren's dinner ends up in the cat. Yes. And Anne's not even speaking to him. I think it's a bit bland for her. She uh, received you with scepticism, I think. I'm not used to cook people cooking for me. And I just like to have what I like to have. It's, you know, I'm sure it's, you know, it's a nice thought and everything, but it's not, I don't do people cooking dinner for me unless it's something like throwing the pizza in the oven kind of thing. The evening finishes as it started, in silence. It's very hard to be thrust into a situation like this. Mum wasn't best pleased I'd cut the, the bush back. Didn't help the fact that she'd had a bad day at work. While Darren gives her the benefit of the doubt, Anne's not pulling any punches. Just, just don't think that uh, that we're compatible. Um, he's seen my side of my temper, and he says that you know he respects me for it. But I can see that he's not impressed by it. He's not happy by that. He treats people slightly different than I do. And to be fair, you know, he's right in some ways. You know, I'm not. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, curt with people sometimes. Truth, I just can't wait to get home. I want to go home. I want to go back to my place. After the news, Darren does go home. But with Anne, and all hell breaks loose. I'm sorry, Anne, it stays there. You know, this is my bloody home for God's sake. First Love Second Chance continues after the news. <laughs> Previously, Anne was reunited with Darren after 18 years apart, and then he moved in. So I'm definitely your guinea pig, then. <laughs> That's really good. Very, very pretty. He said some lovely things. I think I went red. I'm just totally up and gobsmacked. But all was not well. Pure, unadulterated bachelor food. I don't do people cooking dinner for me unless it's something like throwing the pizza. I just can't wait to get home. I want to go home. The time has come for Anne to sample Darren's life. I'm not looking forward to, uh, to today. I'm not looking forward to... Um, going out of my space um, and into Darren's life. I know I'm going to miss Jay, but that won't be as hard as actually being in somebody else's space and not having any control over it. It's not just leaving her son behind that's worrying Anne. The town they're going to is full of bad memories. Memories she spent years trying to forget. I hated my school. Um, so the people that went to that school lived anywhere from there towards Oswald Street. I just wanted to get away um, from the whole area. You know, it was small town people, knew everybody else's business, and I just needed to, to get out of there. I think perhaps when she's there, obviously there'll be the, the memories of what she did, where she went, and if there's any bad stuff that happened in her life when she was in Oswald Street, perhaps some of that might come back. But before she gets there, there's an even bigger hurdle to get over. The bit I'm really not looking forward to is actually getting in the, the Land Rover, because I don't think they're safe things anyway. With Darren driving, I do not do other people driving me anywhere. You know, even from here shopping, I don't do it. Um, it doesn't make me feel good. It's a long journey um, to go over there. I know how long it takes, and I'm not looking forward to it at all. If Anne is supposed to be embracing the idea of living Darren's life, it's not getting off to a good start. I would never, ever, in a million years, sit in a vehicle like this for a long period of time. 
all we can do is we can make frequent stops. I just rather just get there. Because every time we stop, we start still going to get back in here. During the week, Darren's work takes him on the road, drilling for soil samples and sleeping in B&Bs. Tonight is no different. His favourite stopover is run by his good friends Tracy and Mark, which is lucky for Darren, because after that journey, he could do of seeing a friendly face. I have to say, that was a journey from hell. I mean, Darren really needs to learn how to drive. Um, a driving lesson would be good on the motorway. He hogged the middle lane, he hogged the fast lane, he speeded. Um, it was like being in a tin can on wheels. This time, Anne's not the only one whose patience has been tested. I felt a little bit cross. I felt a little bit cross that... Um, she's not trying to be a little more accommodating. I haven't really spoken to him since. I've kept my emotions very controlled. I haven't shouted at him. I haven't screamed and shouted, which is what I'd really like to do. Um, you know, so I'm having to keep myself under check. Perhaps if she tried to strike up a bit more of a conversation in the vehicle, perhaps I might have taken her mind off things, but... Yeah, we just have to see how these next few days go. The mood at dinner is hardly conducive to romance. How are you feeling? OK. I'm really sorry about before. It's OK. It's one of those things. All right. At least you'll get a proper meal here. I had a proper meal in the harvester. Anything I've chosen, no, I've no, had no, proper no, meals. No, 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 so... I don't mean that. No, I mean... Yes. Well, yeah. It's a huge relief when Tracy and Mark decide to join them. Please do. Take a seat. Come on, sit down. Join us. I like, that. I like the way he gets the wet patch. <laughs> I don't mind the wet patch. Shut up. Oh, you are so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. How do I remember him? Tall, dark haired, and not slim, not skinny, but but not fat. Built, mm. well fat. built, fat. covered in, fat. in lots of mm. fat. After insulting Darren in front of his friends, Anne shows she does know how to flirt. <laughs> These guys. Shame it's with the wrong man. And they're very straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say something about you, actually, Mark, but hey. <laughs> You fit in too far, far too close to me. The thing, the thing <laughs> the leg is, action underneath the table, sorry. The, the, the thing is, I think she's quite a strong personality for Darren. They are two totally different people. Mm. Knows what she wants. I'm going to get it. It's been asked whether or not there could be a chance of romance. And quite honestly, Anne's personality is far too strong for me. I, I'm too soft. And I, I'm just not the guy for the job. When Darren stayed at Anne's house, he went to her office to find out exactly what she did for a living. But whilst he's off for a day's drilling, Anne opts for a lie-in instead. shifts over, Darren takes a moment to ponder the delights of having Anne as a house guest. I'm a little bit apprehensive about it. Not the fact of uh, Anne seeing my home, but actually Anne living in my home, because um, obviously we see different, we see life differently. Unhappy about the prospect of another journey, Anne now has to head back to the town she dreads too. I wanted to get away from home so for such a long time that going back is very strange. On the way to Darren's flat, they stop at their old school, the place they first met. That's a change, yeah. God, is it? We're standing on the playing field. It's not green any longer. I'm pretty sure that that middle room up there you were sitting next to the window, and I was sitting in the uh, middle of the classroom when I first saw you. All those years ago, when you were sweet and innocent. I don't think so, because I don't think I was... I, I don't... I mean, I need, to, I need to take... It was definitely upstairs, but I thought it was down that no, end. No, I, because I'm, Kay had... These two don't seem to have anything in common. 
not even their memories. I think at the end of the day, we choose to remember what we want to, and we forget what we don't want to remember. One thing Anne remembers all too clearly is the bullying. I hated school. I absolutely detested school. There were only certain parts of things I liked in school. Art was one of them. It was my, my rescue place. I could have wiped out the rest of it quite happily. Oh, I suppose we can't get in. The memory I had of Darren was that he was my protector, that he was looked out for me, um, that people, you know, respected him. And when I was hanging around with him, people left us alone. You know, they took a distance. Didn't mean that they didn't then sneak around and do it later when people were, other people weren't around. And maybe that made it worse. You know, maybe if I'd fronted it and faced it, it wouldn't have happened. Um, but I always tried to seek sanctuary with somebody else. I always had somebody with me at all times. Being back here has just reminded me how much I loved this area. This is my home. I love this here. That's why I went to art college. That's why I left. You know, they gave me a passion to do something that was creative. I didn't understand I could be good at something, you know, and I was good at something, you know, and it didn't matter what people did to me or what people said, I was good at something. And um, it's very important to me. Very important. After a long and trying day, all Anne wants is a glass of wine, a hot bath, and a warm bed. Oh dear. Um, you have to excuse the person at the moment. I'm still in the middle of doing things. Okay. So uh, you're going to be staying in here. Right. It's not very tidy, but you can get to the bed. Right. Okay. As you can see, I haven't got the wardrobe, so okay. this is where. My clothes are stored at the moment. This is where my camping stuff is, and your bed. Okay. Which is actually Holly's bed, that's why it's like this. So. Mm -hmm. Her first impressions of Darren's living arrangements aren't good. I don't know where to put anything, nowhere to do anything, nowhere to hang anything. You know, I can hardly go and hang something up there because he's got no hangers. I've got nowhere to hang anything. He's made no effort. You know, there's no lamp. I've got his toothbrush next to my bed, you know. It's just hasn't thought about us coming at all. Um, and if I was dating him, this, uh, after the driving, this would have been the end of it. Dan, I'm just sure you can pop up for a second. Anne's Good. reached the end of her pop tether. Second. Come here, come up. Please. Yeah, come in there. And Darren's about to find out. Um, Go on. I'm just sure you can move these bits and pieces because I've got nowhere to put any of my bits and, and having your toothbrush right next yeah, to my Yeah, yeah, so. this is the problem, man. I don't have to make a big issue out of it. I can I'm not making a big, big issue did. of it. No, you just I'm, did. Darren, I'm just asking you if you possibly can. This is the way you ask. Of... Right, well, to be honest, right. I have to be honest, Darren, I have to say, I made sure I made an effort that your room was nice, clean, tidy. I, I, did, did, what I did forewarn you. You didn't. You yes, know, I you did. Said, no, you didn't. You said that I had to accept your place. You were a bit upset about your place and what I it was looking like. I haven't been upset about my place. I have not got any storage facilities at the moment. Right, OK, but... You and did I've not, I did you did, my you did not obviously explain this to me. Look, Anne, if you don't like it, you've got one of two choices, OK? You're in my home now. I'm aware I'm in your home. Yeah, so you have respect for other people's homes. I do, but, but I also not. have... No, I have but respect. But you're not. I'm sorry, but you, I do. You I don't do. come around being, being bullshit in my home. Fine, OK, I'll leave them, because the, I'm, not, I'm, not, do, that's fine. I'm not staying you in You don't this. have to stay in here. That's fine, I'm not staying in here. All right? But you don't have to give it attitude as soon as you walk in. I'm sorry, but, Darren... A guest, and I've got no, a guest, a guest in everybody's house. I've got nowhere to put it. I don't care. This courtesy, is my home. Out of courtesy, you where should have put it. Where do I put it? How about in your room, like I did with my stuff? I'm I cleared my spare room completely so that you had a comfortable... You, I you offered had a comfortable, you my bed. You had a comfortable, I offered you, you my not, bed. Yes, I did. You did, you did not yes, offer me Yes, I did. You did not. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. No, you did not. Well, I'm afraid I did, actually. No, I'm afraid you didn't. No, I would not sleep in you your said, bed. You said, no, no, it's fine, I'll sleep in a single bed. As long as I've got a bed, that's fine. I said, well, you can have it. That's it, having a bed. But this... I'm sorry, Anne, it stays there. Right, fine. You know, this is my bloody home, for God's sake. Fine. Fine. You don't come into my home and start dictating Fine. to me. just do not come in here when my stuff is in here. I'll come in any room I want, providing right. a, okay. there's an agreement. If I, if I want to get something out of here, I'll, I'll ask you no, first. No, I'm sorry, you should actually take what you need out of here now so you don't keep disturbing my stuff. Well, I'm then not, I you suggest could, you, you could leave. Have, you could have had the... Right, I will do. I think you should. Okay. I'm not bothered. I 
I've got better things to do with my life than being dictated to, thank you very much. Bloody hell. Ten minutes later, and Anne's checked into a hotel. She stormed off. She thought she could control the situation by demanding. And now she sees I'm not going to bow down, and so she, she's put herself into a corner. It kicked off so quickly. He seemed to lose his temper, which automatically meant I was on the defensive, and I bit back because I... I from personal experience, with all the things I've been through, I won't allow anybody to bully me anymore. It, it, it instantly puts my back up. Personally speaking, I'm not bothered she went home tonight because I, I don't need to tolerate that sort of attitude. I'm in somebody else's house, which is very upsetting for me anyway. A guy I don't really know that well, and I know now I don't know him that well. You know, I, I'm uncomfortable being around him because we are so different. And, and he spared no thought for my feelings at all. We were going to go bowling tonight. Um, and she was going to meet my friends. Quite frankly, um, I'm going to go anyway. My friends are there waiting for me, so I'm going to go there. By now, however, Anne's feelings are at the bottom of Darren's agenda. His mates are waiting to meet her, and he's got some explaining to do. She, she wasn't happy at all. So I, I got a bit cross, actually. I said, well, you know, come on, this is my home. You can't come in here and tell me how to... You can't come in and dictate to me. So she walked out. So that's that then? So that's that then. Yeah. If somebody came into your house and started telling you how to live, you, you wouldn't be very happy, would you? I know you wouldn't be, would you? No, I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't be. But Darren's not the only one who feels hard done by. I know it's a journey and I know this whole thing was a big experience, but that was an experience I didn't need. Um, and, you know, I will not, I cannot be in that position again with him. I, I don't really want to be in the same room as him again. The trouble is with Anne, she will not meet you halfway. It's her way or no way. It wasn't fair the way she, the way she spoke to me, it wasn't fair the way she treated me. If we could have sat down and talked about it, I'd have probably, I probably would have done what she'd asked me to do. But I'm a, I, I can be really pig-headed when I want to be. It's a great lad, really, you know. Thank you. to come. As if they hadn't said enough already, Anne and Dara must now record a video postcard for each other, saying what they really feel. Last night, reunited first loves Dara and Anne had a huge row. Yes, it resulted in Anne storming out of Darren's flat and spending the night in a hotel. Now, in the cold light of day, Darren's regretting that he didn't make more of an effort. I handled the situation wrong last night. I shouldn't have been verbally aggressive as I was. I should have perhaps backed down and said, OK, well, let's see what we can do. Darren has asked Dan to go for a walk with him to try and clear the air. He hopes the stunning local scenery will help them to discuss their differences in a more civilised manner. I think I overreacted last night. Yes, I should have made more of an effort now I think about it, but it all got, the wires got crossed, everything got misunderstood, and I'm sorry about that. Oh, so we just didn't talk about it, I and mean, the whole thing is we'd had a chance to, to talk about you know, the circumstances and, and what, you know... In all honesty, there's been a lot of tension between us. In the house, I mean, we, we are just two different people. Well, we've become so, that, yeah. See, I don't know, I think, you know, like I said, I think my, your mind plays tricks on you. I don't think, I think in some ways we were different people in school. You know, I remembered you as being... I pushed all my fit, bad feelings onto you, you know, made you into a... into a hero. We've got, like you, like you just said, now we've come to different places in our life. Um, I have my insecurities, I have my hang-ups, I have my own emotional problems. But I deal with mine differently to how you do. Well, you have... I do say men come from Mars and women yeah, from well, Venus. Yeah, that's, that's and it. I, you know... I think last night actually issued, that actually underlined the whole difference in our um, outlook on life and everything. They've agreed to disagree. 
but it's clear to both of them that any love they ever shared is now definitely dead and gone. The memory I had of Darren before we started was that he was my protector, that he was looked out for me, and him being my first boyfriend, it being so important, and we obviously must have been so in love. And now I realise that he was really just the key in the lock to unlock all my other feelings. I tried to, to cling on to something that really wasn't there. So maybe, maybe this journey was all about me taking someone off a pedestal. With no love lost between them, there's little point in Anne staying any longer. This second chance has come to an end. Right. That's been an experience. It has. It has. I hope you've uh, got uh, that's what you needed to anyway. Yeah, I think so. Can I give you a hug now? Go on then. <laughs> All right. OK. See you later. Take care, Anne. There's one final stage of the experiment to complete. With some distance between them, Down and Anne have to record a video message telling each other exactly what they think. No holds barred. Then we met. It was a shock. You were bigger than I'd imagined. Uh, you'd filled out an awful lot. And your beard. Uh, that was a bit of a shock. I'm sorry to tell you this now. Um... I think you did really react, overreact about the bush. You need to be in control of everything. Everything has to fall into the way that you want to do it. And it did get quite stifling. While you were my first boyfriend, um, I do have to confess, now looking back on it and being at school, you weren't the love of my life. It was more about what I was suffering at school. Um, and I basically built it all around you. I really do think you do have a problem with control. It's not good. You must learn to take a step back from a situation and try and look at it from a different angle. You also must learn to loosen up. I just couldn't stay in your house. It was very, very emotional. You blow, blow up, I blew up. I didn't think about your feelings, um, but then I think in some ways you didn't think about mine either. It's been a roller coaster ride these last few days, but it's been an interesting experience. One that I wouldn't like to do again. But if it's achieved anything for you, then brilliant. If not, well, keep trying. If we hadn't gone down the route of doing this, there would be very big questions in my life that I do not know the answers to, and I now know the answers to a good deal of them. So hopefully now, you know, she can just get on with things and, you know, I'll just be a, a, a distant memory. Well, meeting up with Darren made me decide that that was it. I had to go out and start dating, so uh, I just started going out and dating people, lots of them. And there were plenty of guys out there for me to go and have some fun with, and maybe settle down, you know, at some point in time. Maybe I can walk down the aisle with somebody. But Darren's job leaves little time for romance, and anyway, he's more interested in his rocks. I'm hoping to actually keep the job I've got, to hopefully progress and study geology and take it further and see what happens. Well, the course of true love is flowing far from smoothly for Caroline Quentin in Life Begins. That's tomorrow at 9 o'clock. But next tonight on ITV1, a classic Alfred Hitchcock thriller. James Stewart and Grace Kelly star in Rear Window.